Okay, so we are going to, in this video, create part number one of the handrail column, um, which is very similar to part two, which we've created. Um, but there's a little bit more to this one. We have the clamp feature like this, but we also have a loft section here that we're going to have to create and a little cylinder at the bottom. So I'm going to start with the top because this is a very simple um, extrusion to see. So I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to set my working directory to the folder I want to save it to. Hit OK. Then we're going to hit New and we're going to save it as MS1006-01 because that's what I told my students to name it. So we're going to hit OK. I'm going to create an extrude. I'm going to hold right click. Oh, actually, you know what? I got ahead of myself. This is a metric assembly, so I need to change my file to be a metric file. So I'm going to go File, Prepare, Model Properties. I'm going to change my inch pound second to millimeter kilogram second. I'm going to hit Set and hit OK. Now I can close out all this and create my extrude. So I'm going to go Extrude. I'm going to hold right click. Define internal sketch, and I'm going to draw on the front plane. Click the middle button to go into it, and hit this button if yours doesn't rotate. So now this whole thing's based off of the clamping section, section which is a circle. I'm going to create that circle, and then I'm going to click the dimension, and I'm going to pick the radius just once, then middle click. That'll give me a radius dimension, and our radius is 30. Now I can hit refit, and now I'm zoomed in to the right scale. So 30, and then I can create the remainder of this. So we have another circle. We have a line that comes down inside, down like this, then over, then down, then over, and then up. Now I'm going to go to delete segment. I'm going to get rid of all the stuff I don't need. So I'm going to get rid of these arcs. I'm going to zoom in and get rid of these arcs. This one here. And that looks like my section. I just forgot to put a line at the top. And now I have my section. I just middle clicked a few times to get out of that. It kind of cancels you out, brings you back to the arrow. All right, so now I can put my other dimensions in. So I have a dimension from here to here. Left pick, left pick, middle click, 10. I have a dimension from here to here. Uh, well, it's going the wrong way now, so I'm going to type negative 2. That'll bring it back. That negative will go away once I exit this feature. And then we have a dimension from here to here of 19. We have a dimension for the bottom, which is 42. Let's see what else we have. We have a dimension from this point down to this point. And we'll middle click over here of 42. And then, and then we have a dimension from the center, they actually don't give this dimension very nicely. Let's take a look at this. So we have a dimension that goes from the center down 32, down another 32. That would be 64. Or I have a dimension here of 152. Hmm, that is interesting. That almost seems like it's not accurate. All right, but let's do a little math. So if this is 52 down to here, and this sits on top of this, then we have 10, 10. Oh, there must be a gap at the bottom. That's interesting. I would figure it would sit on there, but that's okay. Um, so we have a difference to the center or to the bottom. Of 152. Yeah, so that is 64. So we'll go dimension 
from here down to here. A little middle click will make that 64. All right. And I don't have to move these around, but I'm just doing it just so I can see it better. So now we can hit our checkbox. There's our feature. We're going to switch it to a symmetric constraint. And we're going to go, let's see, 42 wide. So that'll keep my data and planes right in the middle. That's why I did the symmetric. So we'll hit the checkbox. There's my first feature. Okay, now, before I put rounds in, I would really rather put my lofts and things like that in. So I have a loft that comes down to this cylindrical portion. It looks like it's 32 to 42. We have 88 minus 12. So that's going to be 76. So let's create that. All right, so here's how we're going to do it. In Creo, we call these a blend. In most other programs, they call it a loft. So I'm going to go up here to Shapes, and I'm going to pick Blend. Now I'm going to go to Sections, and I'm going to create a sketch just like I normally would. So I'm going to go Define. I'm going to pick this plane on the bottom. And then, let's see, what do we, how do we want to orient this? Let's do this. Let's go right plane is the right plane. And let's hit sketch. That's going to bring me down there. And then I do need to add some references. So I'm going to hold right click, go to references, and I'm going to add these two datums in if they're not already there. Now I can hit close. Now the easiest way to do this is we take a center rectangle. And this is a little odd. I'm curious why it says diameter because it's not round. Okay. Um, it's definitely not a diameter of 32, but it is a section of 32 and 42. They're square sections. So I'm going to take a center rectangle. I'm going to pick the center. I'm going to draw it out just like this. Now what I could do is I can get this perpendicular constraint you see next to my cursor. And that would make it a square, but I'm going to draw it intentionally like a rectangle. Like that. And then I'm going to... Um, middle click and then make each of the sides equal all right to make it a square now like i said this is going to be ooh, i'm going to go up to my arrow and i'm going to make this 32. now i can hit my checkbox and it's important to note by the way where your starting point is so mine is right here that'll be important in a moment so I'll hit my checkbox, then I'll go to Sections, I'll go to Section 2, and I'm going to say it's going to be offset away. And it's going to be offset away exactly 76 millimeters. Then I can say, and make sure it goes in the right direction. You know, I could always put it in like a negative and flip it the other way. So then I'm going to hit Sketch. Now I'm going to do the same thing again, Center Rectangle. Draw it up like this. Click to, and because I clicked the same way and moved the or put the starting point in the same place, let me show you what would happen if I went the other way. So if I went this way, I clicked. Now my starting point's over here. Okay. Now let me make this the right size. I'm going to make these equal, and then I'm going to make this 42. But here's the problem with that starting point being there. It needs to start in the same corner because I want it to connect these corners and these corners and these corners. What would happen right now is this would connect over here. So let me fix it first and then I'll show you the alternative. So I'm going to pick this point and I'm going to hold right click and go start point. Now that's my start point. So when I hit the checkbox, you can see it blends those same corners together. Now let me show you the alternative. If my start point was on the other end, I'm going to create a twisting action. So if I click that, go to start point, I hit OK, notice what happens. This point connects over to this point. So we get sort of a twist, which sometimes when you're modeling things is what you're going for. But in this case, it's not. So I'm going to go sketch. I'm going to pick this point, right click, start point, and hit the checkbox. So that's what my section is supposed to look like right there. Okay. Um, so now. 
I'll hit my checkbox, create that section. And then all I have left to do is create that rounded section at the bottom. All right, so why don't I just create that with a revolve? I'm going to do a revolve, right click, define the sketch. I'm going to pick this front plane. I'm going to sketch. And now I need to add some references. So I'm going to hold right click, reference, pick that bottom, close out of all of it. Then add a center line right down the middle. And then a regular corner rectangle right over like this. Now my diameter is 66. My thickness is 12. Now I'm going to hit OK. It's going to rotate around just like that. And I'm going to hit OK again. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Rotate back. And we can see I need to add a few more features. I'm missing, for example, the clearance hole. And there will be a spot face on the other side because the head needs room. So let's do that. So I'm going to go hole. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to pick on this surface. I'm going to drag this to this front side. I'm going to drag this up to my data plane. So it is 32 from the center and it is 21 from the side. And the size of it is 12 and a half. So we're going to go through and hit OK. Then we're going to put another hole and we're going to pick the axis and the surface to make it coaxial. We're going to make it 30. And we're going to go to placement and actually flip the direction. Right now it's machining over here. We want it to machine this way. So I'm going to hit flip. It flips back. You can see it makes that cut there. There's nothing else for it to cut. And then I'm going to say it goes through and hit OK. All right, so now I've got that hole in there. Then the other one I'm missing is at the bottom. And actually, I'm noticing now I could have put this in to my revolve feature. So why don't I go back and do that? Let me right click my revolve, edit the definition, go to placement, go to edit. And let me put that little counterbore in there. So I need a line goes up and then over and then I'm going to delete segment a couple little features there so this guy is going to be 48 and 3 deep I'm going to drag this over 48 dimension boom boom dimension 3 and I'll hit my checkbox now I've got that little counter board now the next thing I have <clears throat> is an M24 thread. So this thing must screw on to some sort of stud or something to hold a rail in place. So I need to go M24 by 3, 22 deep. That's a big old thread. That's almost an inch in diameter. So let's go hole. I'm going to pick my axis I have now. That's why I put that in there. I'm going to hold control, pick my surface to make it coaxial. Now I'm going to go thread. Scroll way down to M24 by 3, and I'm going to say it goes 22 deep, just like that. And I could even play around with my tap drill and stuff like that. Um, so I guess my thread is 22. I'm going to guess the overall depth of this thing is about 24 at least. Maybe even more than that. It's a big old thread. But we can see, if we go into the wireframe, it's not super, super deep. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say my thread needs to at least go about 26 for my tap drill, and then my thread will be 22. So I'll hit my checkbox. There's my thread. I can go back to my shading. And then if you like, there's a couple ways you can turn this note off. I'm not a big fan of these notes. So you could either turn the note off here. This is view 3D notes. Or if I go into my hole again, I can just go note, add a note, turn it off right there. Because I'm going to create my note with my thread, for my thread in the drawing, I should say. So now all we have left to do is put a bunch of rounds in. Let's do that. The rounds are all two. So we're going to create some transitions in order to round 
this whole thing. So I'm going to pick here. I'm going to hold control pick here. I'm going to hold control pick here. Hold control pick there. Hold control pick these two here. And we'll start with the top first. And actually, since there's no there's no reason not to do this now, we'll hold control and pick these two edges too. So now I'll hit OK. Now here's why I did that. Now if I pick round and I pick any of these surfaces, it's going to wrap all the way around just like that. We have very loud bells. All right, so then the other things I need to do is I'm going to hold control and pick all these little pillar edges. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I have a couple more rounds to put in. So one of my rounds is down here. And it claims that it is a 12. That's a big old round, but OK. That's what it says it is. That's what it is. So we'll put that one in. That's a big round. And then up here, some real structural integrity we're putting in there. This one's going to be a 3. Just like that. And I'm going to hit OK. And now. I've completed this part. So I'll turn my datum planes off so you can see. Now I'm going to go and save and hit OK.